Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. On a hot summer afternoon in the hills of southern Ohio, you just might see this guy, Roger Gal, taking a trip through his hayfield, sometimes with his own little fan club watching. One thing's for sure, you'll never have to wonder what color tractor Roger will be driving. Hey guys, no, it, it has to be orange. <laughs> it's about all it's been on this farm, it's been orange. Oh, it's the best color going. It's bright, and then uh, I like seeing him shined up and looking good. You can spot them a long ways off. You might say orange is the apple of Roger's eye, and with a lifetime spent working the land, he still lives on the farm his granddad had. Back when I was a kid, Grandpa had a, had a WD, first tractor we had, and uh, I've always liked Alice Chalmers, you know, ever since I've been a kid. When we say Alice Chalmers parking only around here, we're kind of serious with that. Yup, this guy even mows his lawn with an Alice machine. And this little beaut, a 1939 Alice Chalmers RC, is just one of the prizes in his growing collection. It's a 1938 WC, styled, uh, one of 750 made in 1938. I think it's really nice, something to be proud of. He, does, uh, he works really hard at fixing them up and does a good job at it, and he really enjoys it. This is a 1938B. Uh, it was just pretty good shape when I got it. Uh, had a lot of fun doing it because it's small. And I have no idea how many he has because they all look alike to me. And uh, he drags in new ones all the time that I'm sure I don't know about. Each one's going to be the last and then this special one comes up that he wants to restore. I got a WD-45 done oh, three weeks ago and, and uh, I've already, I'm looking at, looking at a G now. I want to do a G and then and that may be the, the last one. I, I keep saying everyone's the last one, but never seems to stop at that. So I want to do a G, then we'll, we'll just go from there. No matter what tractor comes next, it will be hard to top Roger's little RC. Roger found it on the internet and brought the broken down tractor all the way home from South Dakota. It was terrible. They had stuff welded all over for some reason. I never did figure out why, but got all that ground off and, and went to work, replaced a lot of the seals, and, new tires, and uh, just had a good time. Roger gave the beat-up old RC a whole lot of TLC, and then put it in the hands of his trusted tractor painter, Keith Collins. It's all been sandblasted and probably four or five coats of primer, uh, epoxy primer, yeah, that's a filler primer, and then uh, uh, five, six coats of paint, I, I would say, that, that's on each one of them. All that effort shows. Back in 1939, a new RC would have sold for about $800. Built on a big WC frame, this tractor was powered by a small Alice B engine. Kind of a betweener, I guess, between the WC and the B. But for some reason, it really didn't take off all that well. Because, well, they only made 5,000 of them. The reason there's so much length here between the, the, the radiator shroud and the front end is because it's got a B engine. And it's smaller, so it set everything back. Now, if you see a WD or a WC, you know, the radiator shroud would be up here. No, I think it was, uh, it was probably under horsepower for the size of it, probably. You know, with the B engine and the WC frame, it didn't have the horsepower that it, uh, that it needed, even though it did have different gears in the rear end. But it still was, uh, was underpowered, I think. As a result, Alice only built the RC from 1939 to 1941. That means there aren't many of these tractors left today. They're hard to find. You just can't find them anyplace. I think there's, uh, there's only two of them in the county that I'm aware of, and I got both of them. It took Roger two years of hunting to find the correct RC wheel bolts, and the RC fenders had to be replaced too. They were terrible condition. Looked like they used them for brakes, you know, when they're going backwards, they run into something, they just stop whenever they hit the fenders. It drives good, easy to steer, right? Probably because it's light on the front end, it really steers great. It's the easiest steering tractor I've got. Underpowered or not, there's lots to like about this spunky little tractor. One thing that didn't win any prizes was the seat design. This is the backrest that they put on the tractors. Pretty, pretty well the same thing for, for many years, but uh, you go buy a tractor, a WC or an RC, 
this is gone. They, they, they took it off after they went through the plow ground one time because it, it'll bounce up there and hit you in the back. And everybody said that's the first thing they took off because it, uh, it hurt your back, so they took them off. And you see these, a lot of these in, in new condition because they've been hanging in the shed for a long time. You can tell this is one guy that knows and loves his Persian orange tractors. And like all good grandfathers, he's doing what he can to pass those feelings along to another generation. Okay, come on guys, let's get this thing cleaned up. We've been out running around in the... This sure is a orange tractor, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting about big enough to go with Grandpa now to, to tractor shows, so uh, they'll be interested in them. I think their favorite color is orange, I think now. <laughs> <laughs>